Oh, looks like the market just corrected. Probably liquidating a bunch of crypto traders on the futures market. Like on February 2nd, 2025, where an estimated eight to $10 billion was wiped out when the markets dumped after Trump announced new tariffs on imports, sparking headlines and upset tweets in the following days. Large events aside, liquidations happen all the time, especially when markets are volatile. But what exactly is a liquidation and how does it work? First of all, to understand what liquidation is, you have to understand how leverage trading works. Leverage trading enables traders to borrow funds from an exchange to control a larger position size than the capital they have. For example, with two times leverage, you'll double your buying power, allowing you to buy up to $200 of assets with only $100 in your balance. But more buying power also means more risk. With leverage, both your gains and your losses are amplified. When you open a leverage position, the exchange calculates a liquidation price based on the size of your position, your entry price, and margin, which is the collateral you've put up for the trade. The higher the leverage, the closer the liquidation price is to your entry price. If the market moves against you and hits that price, your position will be forcibly closed by the exchange to recover the borrowed funds. This happens when your account no longer has enough margin to maintain the position. In most cases, you'd lose almost all your balance, which isn't fun. So why does it happen so often? Liquidations usually hit traders that use excessive leverage, where the liquidation price is very close to their entry price. So even small price movements can trigger liquidation. There are also traders who confuse stop losses with liquidations, or even intentionally use their liquidation price as a stop loss, assuming they're essentially the same. While both would close positions, they are not the same thing by a long shot. When stop loss orders are triggered, your position would close automatically at the price you set, but you won't lose all your margin. Liquidations, however, are far more costly. This is because, along with the margin used to open a position, exchanges require a maintenance margin to keep it open, usually around 0.5 to 1% of the position size. If your margin falls below that required level, liquidation is triggered. This ensures the system has enough to pay winners, but those over leveraged can face massive losses. To understand it better, let's compare the two in an example. Let's assume you have $5,000 in your balance to be used as margin for a 20 times leverage position worth $100,000 with a 0.05% trading fee. With a maintenance margin requirement of 1%, you need to maintain at least $1,000 in equity to avoid liquidation. If your liquidation price is at $10,000 and price drops to that level, your remaining equity will be under $1,000, triggering liquidation. However, if you place a stop loss just 1% above your liquidation price at $10,100 and get stopped out, you'd lose around $3,940 plus the $50 in trading fees. But you'd still keep the remaining $1,010 of margin because you got out before liquidation. In contrast, getting liquidated at $10,000 will leave you with nothing as the exchange takes your $1,000 maintenance margin on top of your $4,000 loss. Note that this example, of course, assumes there's no price slippage, where the order doesn't execute at your intended price. When slippage happens, losses may be larger than intended, or you could even be liquidated if the price moves past your stop loss and hits your liquidation price. Therefore, you must always manage your risk by placing stop losses reasonably well away from the liquidation price, using leverage responsibly, and making sure to have enough margin in your account to avoid liquidations. Hopefully after this video, you've learned enough to avoid them. And if you're still unsure about price slippage, we've touched on it in our previous video on how liquidity works.